The Great Barrier Reef is a natural wonder under pressure. Apart from climate change, scientists say one of the biggest threats is poor water quality caused by runoff from the mainland. Sediments come from grazing predominantly and nutrients predominantly come from cane. It's, it's fertiliser runoff and that can cause algal outbreaks which can cause crown of thorns outbreaks. Queensland farmers have been trying for years to limit coral damage by controlling the runoff from their properties. The pesticide story is unbelievably positive in terms of the loss of pesticides constantly reducing. And also in that vein, we're starting to see dramatic reductions in terms of losses of nutrients in, off farm. But the latest scientific report cards say water quality isn't improving fast enough. The inner reef's um, bad. <laughs> The whole, with respect to water quality, parts of the outer reef are not good either. And I say that's bullshit! Yeah. The Queensland government's response is to propose even stricter runoff laws, sparking a showdown with farming groups along the Queensland coastline. We had a north to sit today. Scrap these laws, let us have our say. The current bill puts huge imposition on industry that's already struggling. It's too detailed, it's too complex, and that just poses too significant a risk for the industry. Runoff restrictions are already in place in three major reef catchments, covering cane farming and grazing. The Queensland Government is now proposing to both strengthen and expand those restrictions to bananas, grain and horticulture in all six major catchments that run into the inner reef covering nearly half a million square kilometres. What we've seen over the last 10 years uh, has been an attempt to move as quickly as possible under a voluntary method, uh, but that hasn't achieved the results that I think everybody has been trying to achieve. Uh, that's why we are moving to a mandatory scheme. Cane growers argue they've been doing their bit and further regulation is unnecessary. Given the state of the reef, do you agree that something radical needs to be done? Uh, we think we're already doing things that are radical. What, what this is doing is actually devaluing what they've already done and also demotivating anyone from being involved in the future. Yes, they are still making a little bit of progress, but it's very minor now and nowhere near enough to um, reach the targets that have been set for water quality that we know will protect the Great Barrier Reef. Professor John Brodie is one of Australia's leading water quality scientists and has worked extensively with cane growers for more than a decade. He supports the move for tougher laws but also argues agriculture can't do it alone. The government's own estimate of the amount of money we need to fix up water quality on the Great Barrier Reef is about $9 billion to be spent over 10 years. That sort of money is just not available. So it is complex but we also need the money. As part of their campaign against tougher runoff laws, farming groups in Queensland have also been casting doubts on the science. There are a number of eminent scientists who are saying it is important we stop and do a quality check. The scientific community talk about something called a replication crisis, and I'm no scientist, so I don't understand it in detail. So who are these eminent scientists who are saying this? Well, the one that's got a lot of publicity at the moment is Dr Peter Ridd. But when you actually go out on the Great Barrier Reef, and I mean the Great Barrier Reef, which is almost 100 kilometres from here, you don't find any sediment or virtually any sediment or mud from the land. Dr Ridd is a sceptic of both climate change and evidence the reef is in poor health and has been addressing farmers' protest rallies along the Queensland coast. The water quality of the reef is, a, is determined by the Pacific Ocean, not by farmers. This is incredibly frustrating. Um, the science on the impacts of water quality has been settled for decades. The federal government's independent expert panel, which includes former chief scientists of the Australian government and the CSIRO, says Dr Ridd is misrepresenting the science. The panel took the extraordinary step of writing to federal and Queensland ministers, comparing Dr Ridd's tactics to that of the tobacco industry. Is AgForce promoting the equivalent of the tobacco industry trying to stop an anti-smoking message? Not at all, not at all. And to us it's tragic when people who want to contribute positively to an important debate 
uh, you know, the vitriol that follows or the personal attacks that follow are quite disappointing. Cane growing groups have also been highlighting Dr Ridd's views. You don't think that sows the seeds of doubt that perhaps cane growers don't need to do much more to improve water quality? Uh, the evidence we're showing is that cane growers are still very committed to do what they can about water quality. I don't think it's sowing any seed of doubt that didn't exist previously. Rural lobby group Agforce is asking for a short delay for what it describes as an independent review of the scientific evidence. We could get other input from eminent people, powerful thinking, into the debate and check that through a QA process in a short period of time which would not put the reef at risk but might just give us some insight and some learning we don't currently have that would provide an even better outcome. The business of the Senate, motion number one. This push for a rechecking of the science has been supported by the federal LNP, which has approved a Senate inquiry into reef water quality. But the Queensland government is standing firm. What we're seeing uh, is an attack on science. And we are a responsible government, and any responsible government only uses peer-reviewed published science. The tourism industry will take a hit if the World Heritage listing of the reef is downgraded. That's a real possibility when the World Heritage Committee reviews the reef's status next year. So UNESCO is going to be looking very carefully at the actions that we take. Um, and unfortunately the voluntary measures have not been fast enough. This is despite the fact that many farmers that I've met personally, that I've been on their farms, have been doing some great work. But farming groups say they're being asked to carry too much of the burden. So to have so much extra green and red tape put on a struggling industry is incredibly frustrating and concerning. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 730's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.